Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a new video. So in this one, we're gonna be covering all the do's and don'ts of dropshipping in 2020. So we'll be covering topics like VAT and taxes, everything you need to know about that, shipping times, how to deal with long shipping times, how to improve them, etc. Um, setting goals for 2020 and realistic expectations. Um, expectations are a big one, especially if you're planning on starting dropshipping in 2020 and you're new to the business, because a lot of beginners, it's, it's very easy to fall into the trap of watching a couple of videos on YouTube, um, seeing a couple of screenshots on Facebook, and then thinking that dropshipping is easy it's easy to make money whereas that just isn't the case it's a big misconception that dropshipping is an easy way to make money whereas it's an easy business to start because you don't actually need much money up front to begin but to actually make money in the long term and sustain something profitable, then that is where the difficulty lies. So this video then will hopefully clear a few things up, clear a few of those questions up that um, you're trying to find the answers to and ultimately prepare you to avoid failure and find success in 2020. Before we jump into slide number one then, if you enjoyed the video at any point and you learned something new, make sure you hit that like button for weekly videos on this sort of thing as well. Make sure you subscribe. And I do read every single comment too. So if there is a question on anything whatsoever, make sure you post it below and I will answer it. That being said then, let's get into point number one which I've touched on briefly which is setting yourself goals so the best way to think about this then when you're starting a business um, is to the metaphor that I like to use is that when somebody builds a house you have to build the foundations first before you build the house on top of that and if you don't build a house with the correct foundations then eventually that house is going to fall over and it's the same with business if you don't set yourself the correct goals expectations and do things correctly from the offset then ultimately you're going to be setting yourself up for failure so besides the obvious foundations of any successful dropshipping business then so for example then a good um, Shopify store a good marketing campaign with a good product then these are the goals in which I recommend you set yourself depending on what journey you're currently at so if you're a beginner and you're going to be starting in 2020 then number one don't set yourself turnover goals because certainly from the people I've spoken to on social media they'll say right in my second month or even their first month they'll say I want to make £10,000 I want to do $10,000 in sales and if they don't stay on track so to hit 10k in sales then in a month you need to do approximately 330 30 pounds per day and if they don't stay on track what they end up doing is throwing even more money into their business into a losing product a losing ad set a losing campaign trying to recover that goal so they can reach that benchmark and what ends up happening is they just waste their money so instead what you should be doing number two is focusing on your profitability and the reason being then is because when it comes to business then your bottom line is absolutely everything so how much profit you make it doesn't matter if you do 10 billion in sales every single year if you're not making a penny of profit then you're not making Making any money so try not to get wrapped up in all the screenshots and numbers you see on YouTube because what you do in sales is irrelevant if you're not making a good profit margin another thing I recommend doing as well because I see so many people fall short of this is they'll do drop shipping for a month two months and if they're not doing very well they'll just quit and if you could do something if you could be really successful at something after a couple of months of doing it then everybody would be doing it and making hundreds of thousands of pounds so one of your goals then should be on focus on staying in business for the entire year if you can commit to drop shipping for 12 months and invest set yourself a budget each month or say 200 pound a month on ads your chances of success increase the longer you do anything whether it's riding a bike learning to drive a car running a business the more and longer and the more time you dedicate to doing it the better chance you have of being a success so you're much better off if you're a beginner starting in 2020 is focused on staying in business and trying to be profitable from day one. Number two then for everybody else who's a bit more exper um, experienced and perhaps been doing dropshipping for a while now making a bit of money then these are the kind of rules and goals I recommend you set yourself in 2020. Number one profitability is king um, especially if you're dropshipping in the UK once any limited business hits I believe 85 grand in a 12 month period um, as I'm recording this um, you have to register as VAT so 20% goes off your bottom line right away so rather than focus on trying to do a million pound in sales over 12 months you're much better off again focus on being as profitable as possible because once you hit that VAT threshold then 20% just wiped out straight away number two outsource as much as possible you need to be focusing your time on growing your business and doing the thing that's going to make you money which is going to be the product research which is a skillful task and it's going to be your marketing again another skillful task things like order fulfillment customer service um, can be outsourced very quickly very cheaply and they're time consuming tasks too so they'll free up a lot of time for you to dedicate to growing and making your business more profitable number three is focusing on on acquiring as many customers as possible at break even or better. The reason being then is because 
certainly as a beginner standpoint, then most people tend to focus on front end sales. So spending 10 pound on Facebook to make 20 pound back. Whereas every time you require a customer, an email address, um, a physical address, a telephone number, then each one of those can be used as a potential opportunity to bring that customer back onto your store. I've seen stores before be run at a loss for nine months of the year, banking on the fact that the more customers that they acquire, the more money they're gonna be making in the last three months of the year coming up to Christmas. And that'll be enough to essentially make them enough money to make it worthwhile. Wow. So essentially what they're doing, which is number four, is building a cash pot for Q4 to capitalize on the period we've just gone through where most people are spending money. Moving on to point number two then, which is don't worry about delivery times. One of the biggest kind of hesitations beginners have when it comes to start dropshipping and for the following reasons really then, um, purely because really delivery is not as big a deal as most people think. A lot of people say customers will definitely not wait that long, but the truth of the matter is that they do. Just to show you a screenshot then, I've put a link there so you can go and check this out. It's from the ePacket Express website and this is what they quote as the average e-packet shipping times um, so unless you're dropshipping to any of these countries and all other support countries so that includes America UK then you're looking at seven to ten business days which actually isn't that bad the reason being then so many people ask me well why does it say 20 to 40 days or 20 to 35 days on Aliexpress and it's because when a product doesn't arrive within that time period you can open a case and you can claim your money back and if the supplier can't prove um, proof of delivery then essentially they have to refund you so what they do is they overquote the delivery times making sure it will arrive in time so they have less refunds so even though it quotes that in realistic terms on average it actually arrives a lot quicker than that if you're still not happy with that then there are some ways in which you can actually reduce the shipping times number one is just make sure you choose e-packet when drop shipping from aliexpress certainly shipping to the uk and us is by far the quickest method i've seen that you can get from aliexpress and usually one of the cheapest too number two is you can use not many people know you can do this by the way is use the shipping from tab on aliexpress to find local suppliers so to give you a quick demonstration of this then um, i've searched for home camera Wi-Fi is a particular product and what you want to do is if you see this checkbox here you can click on that and depending on what product you search for you'll be able to find what countries you can actually source that product from so if we go ship from United States we'll go for orders as well so we're dealing with a decent supplier and if we just open this up it um, doesn't matter what sensor size we we'll go from you can see here we can ship from us with a us plug and free shipping to the united states in four to seven days so you don't always have to wait that one to two weeks if you're shipping from the us to the us you can get it in under a week if you're shipping to the uk look for supplies in spain or france or germany because they can usually get it to the uk in under a week um, as well the other thing you can do as well is progress into using an agent i recommend going to china brands to find agents on there they seem to be the best place to find the most trustworthy and reliable ones um, just make sure you vet them out etc number four is you can actually progress from drop shipping um, once you found a profitable product so what you can do then is use the drop shipping business model to test the products for really cheap and then if you found one that you can drop ship profitably then you can always like buy a bulk order of say two three hundred units you don't have to spend that much money to begin with send it to a fulfillment center in your local country that you're marketing to and then just get them to ship it to their customers and again you'll be able to get it to your customers in one to three days and the profit margins are significantly better when you're buying say two or three hundred of a product rather than one at a time the final point then to finish off this one is just be careful where you get your advice from for example then don't listen to anyone who hasn't ran a drop shipping business before don't go through the comments and listen to people in there because you don't know what their experience is for example that's like taking fitness advice from somebody out of shape if you wanted to lose weight um, and get in shape then you wouldn't listen to someone who wasn't in shape it just doesn't make sense so just be careful and um, where you get your advice from Number three is do not rush things. Um, it's great to be motivated and eager to get started and want to start making some money. It's awesome, but just make sure that you don't rush things because if you over rush, it leads to skipping corners and poor quality of work. So for example, if you have a poor, um, either one of these things so if you have a poor store or a poor facebook ad campaign or a poor product you will not succeed you're much better off taking your time making sure everything's right before you do actually start so to give you an example then here's a drop shipping store i found and i put just like a red mark through all the things that i would change if it was me and these would be potential things that would hinder you from making sales so number one is they've got a chinese brand name up there there's no other mention of that brand name on this page so why is it up there um, number two is the product name 
name they've named it like a pretty just generic product name that doesn't really make sense so if anybody wanted to find this product elsewhere they could do very quickly if they named it something unique for example um, a name that if somebody then went on to google to search for they wouldn't find anything else then again that's a, like a little technique you can use to keep people onto your store and buying from you Number three is they've still got the tax included note there. It's just when it comes to um, building a product page, then if there's information on that page that just is going to detract away from a customer buying from you, then I'll just remove it. If it's included, they don't need to know that, so just remove it. The next thing is the add to cart button is the default color. It needs to be a unique color on the screen so it pops and stands out. As stupid as it sounds, it makes quite a big difference. It's all about percentages. If you can get an extra, say, 2% of people to click that add to cart button, that's gonna make a difference to your bottom line. The next point is they've used like a unique font for item description. They haven't used that font anywhere else so it doesn't just flow nicely. It doesn't look universal. It doesn't look um, in form if that makes sense. And then when you look at the layout of the features, they've used features in red and red is kind of like um, a hesitant color. When you look at the psychology of colors, it's like a hesitant color. Um, and features is meant to be like a good thing, a beneficial thing. So using red just doesn't make sense. Then I've used the default font and kind of like a bland kind of generic color. Again, it doesn't really stand out. They haven't bullet pointed it. Um, reading through this, some of them don't even make sense. So just all in all, you're much better off just taking your time and being professional, making sure everything's right before you get started. So a common example of this then is if you've been getting hundreds of visitors or thousands of visitors to your store, but you've been making no sales, then this is usually because of a poor store that has been rushed so if that is the case for you just make sure you take a look at your store get some feedback on it um, and make the necessary changes um, and just to finish off then it doesn't matter how much money you spend on facebook ads if you have poor quality anything then you won't be successful people are going to be hesitant of new businesses you need to tick all the right boxes um, to make sure that they feel safe and sound um, spending their money with you so some recommendations and number one don't be lazy or impatient. For example, order samples of your products and film your own ads if you have to or pay an influencer so you have a decent product, something really professional looking, a professional piece of content to market it with and write product descriptions and make sure you use decent fonts and colors. If you're not sure what a good font is, just Google it. When I first started, I Googled what are good colors to make people buy things and there's a whole psychology, a whole different chart of different colors and it's quite interesting in fact. I mean, I won't bore you now in the video of why banks use certain colors why investment firms use certain colors why all sale signs in red for example um, and it's the same with descriptions and text just google what is a good product description how to get write a good product description how to get people to buy after reading something and the things you can learn that will make all the difference trust me it'll be worth it Number two then is get honest feedback on everything. Don't just go to your mum and say, check out the new website I made. Um, do you think it's good? Because your mum's always going to say it's really good. Um, go on Facebook groups. You can join my one, post your um, URL in there. You'll get some good honest feedback in there. And then number three to finish this one off is have pride in what you do. Because if you're proud of what you're creating and what you're about to do, then you're going to be more interested in it. You're going to be more positive. You're going to have a positive outlook. Um, and overall, it's just going to make you perform better and be more motivated, which is huge, especially in the beginning. Moving on to number four then so this is the uk import taxes i get hounded every single day about questions on this um, so if you want to um, satisfy yourself and go and read the correct information from the official gov.uk website i've put the link here but the two things you have to worry about then which i've taken a screenshot for you just to go through quickly number one is vat and number two is customs duty so vat wise then any goods under the cost of 15 pounds that includes shipping absolutely everything all in so if you're buying something from aliexpress including e-packet as long as it's under 15 pounds you won't pay any vat Number two is the customs duty, anything under £135. Again, that includes delivery, um, insurance is absolutely everything. As long as it's under £135, there'll be no charge. So as long as the product you're drop shipping is under £15, there'll be absolutely no extra fees to pay. The chances are too is working with a lot of suppliers on AliExpress. They know what drop shipping is. Um, they want to look good to the people buying their products. So even if you are ordering a product like £20, £30, um, I've seen quite a few suppliers undervalue the product on the invoice on the actual packaging just to make sure it goes through a bit more smoothly and so there are no import um, taxes to pay etc if there is vat or customs duty to pay it's not the end of the world so typically it will in the uk anyway it will be royal mail and parcel force that do the uk stint of the delivery process and what will usually happen then is they'll put an invoice through the door of the customer and they can go online and pay it or they
they can go to the local um, post office and pay it and then they'll get given the order it's not a big deal don't worry about it I certainly wouldn't let it put you off just starting I'm um, getting started right away and just deal you can deal with things like this as you come across them Moving on to the next point then is test as much as possible. The amount of people I speak to, they've tested one product, one ad, and one store, and they've had no success. So they go online and say drop shipping's a scam and it doesn't work. Not everything you do will work nor will everything you expect to work will work. So just make sure you test as much as possible and trial and error it, to some degree is going to be inevitable. So as you develop the skill of picking products and marketing, then your success rate is gonna be higher. But in the beginning, it's gonna be low. So some trial and error will be necessary. In terms of how to test efficiently, then here's some points to consider next time you're running ads, next time you're picking products. Number one, just make sure you run fair tests. It's not fair to spend £100 on one product and £10 on the next product. It's not going to be accurate. It's not going to be fair to test audience sizes of 10 million people against 100,000 people. The same for placements and devices. If you're only testing a desktop audience, then it's not an accurate test. It's not a fair test. You don't even know if mobile works or not. So make sure you test both. Um, and then same for demographics as well. Don't just focus on one gender make sure you test absolutely everything and then when you find what works and you've tested it fairly then you can start to narrow down and hone in on that more specific and um, higher value audience number two is test multiple products again the amount of people i see um, it just frustrates me they'll test one product maybe two products it's rare in fact that i've actually spoken to somebody who's tested more than three products and because they've found no success then they just write drop shipping and facebook ads off all together and just say facebook ads don't work you need to test multiple products when i find first started it took me six products before I found one that made a single sale just one sale before I made one single sale it took me six different products and then number three then is data is king the more data you have the more accurate representation you have of whether a product works or not to give you an example then of why this is true let's say for example you want to sell a dog product and you go to a local dog show that has a thousand dog owners in one single room you go up to the first dog owner and ask them whether they like the product and whether they would buy it or not and they say yes so instead of asking everybody else you leave thinking that you've got a really good product and that every single dog owner wants to buy it whereas you might ask the other 999 dog owners in that room and they will say no so the more people you ask the better mean the better average you going to get of whether people actually like that product or not number four then to give you an idea of kind of like the success rate in which i've been working on so for the past 160 ad sets that i've ran 35 out of that 160 have ran at 1.7 ROAS or better. So take that, keep it in mind, do with it what you will. But just what I guess what I mean by that is don't expect every single ad set to be a winner. Moving on to the sixth and final point then is be positive. Now, as cliche as this sounds, um, it's 100% true. The amount of people I speak to who want to get involved in dropshipping and I'll answer their question and then they have a negative response to it. It's like if you're going into anything with a negative mindset and, and, and a negative outlook, then you're going to set yourself up for failure you need to be positive through the tough times through the good times because at the end of the day dropshipping works it's a fact but the harsh truth is that only a small percentage of people will actually succeed at it trust the process work smart and 2020 will be a great year and again you don't have to take my word from it here's just a few screenshots from some of the members of my ecom academy and you can see on now the kind of results that these guys have achieved and with that being said then one final thing which is thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please do make sure you hit the like button please make sure you subscribe any questions you want to ask me i will answer them so just comment them down below for more content on shopify and dropshipping and just to kind of follow my daily life i guess uh, make sure you follow me on instagram check out my free ebooks in the description below and finally if you want to join a proven step-by-step -step course that comes with my support you've seen the results um, then check out my ecom academy the link will be in the video description below or if you download this keynote simply click on this and it will take you right to it with that being said guys thanks again and i'll see you in the next one